Welcome to Live Devotions. I'm Robert Mosbach. Psalm 69, this is Psalm of David, where he's going through one of the most difficult times in his life. It's a psalm in which he cries out to God and is seeking God with all of his heart. You know, God is saying that he's looking for us to seek him with all of his heart. And Jesus said, if you seek him, you will find him. And in the middle of that psalm, David says, I will keep right on praying to you, Lord, for now is the time you're bending down to hear, and you are ready with a plentiful supply of love and kindness. Now answer my prayer, Lord, and rescue me as you've promised. Pull me out of the mire. Don't let me sink any further. And you know, there are these times when you are seeking God, it's as if your prayers come to fullness, as if the measure is filled up you maybe have shed your tears. You maybe have just prayed all you know to pray. And all you're doing is repeating the same prayer because you've prayed it all. And you don't need to keep repeating it. Just start praising the Lord because you've come to the time that you will see his answers. And you need to believe this. You know, see, Jesus said, when you pray, believe you have received it and it shall come to pass. In other words, you shall have whatsoever you pray Mark 11, verse 23. I want to encourage you to believe the Lord's heard your prayer. The Lord has been there with you when you prayed. And he knows everything. Daniel was praying to God for 21 days and there seemed to be no answer at all. When the angel finally came to Daniel, he said, Daniel, you're greatly loved in heaven. From the first moment you prayed, your prayer was heard. And yes, there are sometimes challenges and pressures and circumstances that help us not always to realize what God's saying or realize what he's doing. But if you stay in that place of faith and prayer with him, then your eyes will open and your eyes will see it. But God has been preparing when you've been praying. Jesus said, whatsoever you desire, ask and believe that you will receive. And when we've asked in faith, Believe that our Father has heard you. You know, Jesus was a man of prayer. He said, Father, I know that you always hear me. And he still prayed. Friends, prayer is like communicating. One man said to me one time, Pastor Robert, I don't have to go to church to be a Christian. And I said to him, I don't have to go home to be married. In other words, it's a bit of a silly thought. Friends, I understand that we may not always be able to be there. But why would you go to church? Because you love God and you love his family and you love hearing his word and singing and worshiping together with his people. That's what we're going to do in heaven. Friends, I love my wife, Virginia. I love Joshua and, and Zachary and his wife, Sean and, and Mariah. I, I love my family. So I want to be with them. It's not I have to go home. I want to be there. I want to be with Virginia. And the same is true. Why would you want to spend time in prayer? Why would you want to come and worship God in his church? Because you love God and you love his family and you love his people. You love his church. David said in Psalm 16, my favorite thing is to be with God's devoted people. I want to encourage you to go to church. Don't go there to maybe criticize or see the things that maybe are not according to your preference. But go there to love God. Go there to love God's people. Go there to let his Holy Spirit speak to you. Go there to have yourself a good time and you will not be disappointed. If you come with that kind of a heart and spirit, then God will meet you in church. Go to church regularly. The Bible says in Hebrews 10 verse 24, do not neglect the gathering of the saints as is the custom of some. In other words, sometimes we can get in the habit of not having time to go to church, of not having time to get together with God's people. And it's true, friends, life can get silly busy. But I want to encourage you, don't let the busyness of life distract you from the values of life. There's such a value in coming together with God's people. There's such a value in, in hearing God's word and loving his church and his family and being a member of a church where you can grow, where you can help build God's house, where you can be part of that church and love that church and ministry. Remember never to talk unkind about your minister. Don't ever speak unkind about him. I had a young couple ask me, what can we do to have a lovely family? What can we do? I said, oh, simple. Bring your children to church and raise them in God's house and have them love God and his people and his ministers. And friends, it's true. 
If we make the effort to build God's house with the way we think and talk about it and what we do to support it with our time and with our gifts, then God will also build our house. He will bless our house because we bless his house. You will always reap what you sow. You sow good seed into God's house, you'll reap good seed into your own house. Now let's reap a good harvest this year of God's favor and blessing into our homes because we've set our heart to love God's house. David said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall be in the house of the Lord forever.